Year class of 2025, a warm welcome to the Yale and US community. Since 2014, when our first batch of students entered the college, then housed within RC4 in U-Town, first year assembly has become a tradition for us to formally welcome our first year students to Yale and US. Today, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the first year assembly has gone online. Some of you are here on our very own campus, others are at home. Regardless of where you are watching from, I hope that you will be able to find comfort in knowing that in these challenging times, you are now part of a new community which is here to support you. When Yale and US College was launched in 2011, the founding faculty, staff, and members of our governing board participated in discussions that led to the formulation of the vision for the college. A community of learning founded by two great universities in Asia for the world. A community does not happen by chance. It is built and sustained by constant and conscious daily actions from all its members. Only then does the community hold meaning for those within it, when everyone is bound together by a sense of trust, belonging, and care for one another. A diverse group of students, faculty, and staff make up our community. That is our student core, comprising yourselves and other students. You give life to the college and become each other's pillars of support and encouragement. Teaching faculty work hard to provide a rigorous and enriching educational and intellectual environment to deliver a high quality curriculum and learning experience for all of you. Together with our staff members, they strive to ensure that your wellness, academic and other needs are met to the fullest. A dedicated team of staff members work tirelessly behind the scenes, sometimes seven days a week, to ensure that the college functions efficiently and sustainably. Over the next four years, you will immerse yourself in this community that the faculty, staff and students before you have built together. As you experience the opportunities that college life brings, I urge you to better yourself in all ways possible. Care for and continue to build this community like those before you did. We weaken our community when we fail to appreciate what each group brings to the college and when we do not do our part in continuing to build and uphold this community. What gives our community its strength are our shared beliefs. That is the secret sauce that binds us all together. I first revealed a set of college values at the beginning of the last academic year. Transformation, exploration, respect, inclusivity, and care. This value did not just appear out of thin air, but rather took over two years of self-reflection and consultation from students, faculty, and staff to codify a set of beliefs that guides how the college behaves and functions. It is only by being rooted in these foundational beliefs that you'll be able to go on and impact the wider community. As a community, we aim to provide each and every one of you with a transformative experience by encouraging habits of mind and character. I believe you will be transformed by the experiences and knowledge you will acquire, gaining diverse perspectives and growing in a multitude of ways. Through this, we transform and explore. At the same time, in a small college like ours, you will live and learn in close proximity with your peers. You will also interact with faculty and staff members, as well as extended members of this family, like our security guards, cleaners, and dining hall staff, all of whom work very hard to make Yale NUS a home for us. Different people may lead you to challenge the way you think or do things, Keep an open mind and embrace the diversity of views and experiences as well as opportunities that this will bring. That is how we can show care and respect for one another whilst also working together to build an inclusive community. Over the next four years, as you journey through college, remember to be thankful. Be thankful for the communities that have shaped you into what you are today, your families, neighborhood, school, town, city, and more. They have been an integral part of your various endeavors so far. Be thankful for the college community you're about to join, one that I hope will become as special and dear to you as those of which you are already a part. 
I look forward to seeing you build upon what we have, and I'm sure you will help make Yale and US the best that it can be. Once again, class of 2025, welcome to the Yale and US family. Dear class of 2025, welcome to this new and hopefully wonderful phase of your life and to our community of learning. It is my sincere wish that you will remember this phase of life as one of blossoming, happiness, and growth. Starting university might feel daunting, but in many respects, it's like starting to farm when you do not know anything about it. While I was trying to educate myself about farming in preparation for my first year assembly speech, since your orientation team is taking root, I found the following advice by Tom Bottoms, now a farmer in Davis, California. He said, number one, learn the science, but also talk to as many farmers as possible. Number two, build trust-based relationship with some farmers that inspire you. Number three, enjoy the operations. Number four, be patient. Number five, question everything. Number six, listen. Number seven, start taking action where you are with what you have. It turns out that being a student at Yale and US has a lot in common with being a farmer, or at least it seems. Let me explain. Let's start with point number one, learn the science. Learn the science, embracing all the possibility of learning that only a liberal arts and science college provides. From classes in humanities, social sciences, and science, some with a name or a focus that would have never occurred to you. But learning the science in the 21st century doesn't mean sitting alone in your room in front of your computer and breaking your head without asking for help. Learning is about confronting your idea with those who think differently from you and have different experiences than you. It's about chatting, debating and disagreeing. It's about asking a friend for help. Learning is about planting a lot of seeds, observe them carefully and care for them reliably. It's about going out there in public transport, squares, parks and beaches and understanding how what you read about or learned about in the classroom connects to everyday life. It's talking to normal people, the farmers, and with their humility, simplicity and hard work give meaning to what we learn in our classrooms. Point number two, build trust-based relationships with some farmers that inspire you. College is about building trust-based relationships with people that will possibly remain friends, mentors, or sources of inspiration for the rest of your life. People that will console you in difficult days, make you laugh, and make all the difference in the way you will experience this new phase. Look for this relationship among your peers, but also reach out to the staff of the residential colleges, the Dean of Student Office, SIP, the Counseling Center, and us, faculty. We all want the best for you. Point number three, enjoy the operation. Enjoy being a student, enjoy taking care of the seeds you've planted, and look for new ones to try. Process is as important as outcomes. I know students are really worried about grades. Let a bit of that worry go. Worry about being in the operation with love for what you're learning, with passion, with care for what you have planted. And if you don't have a passion yet, explore. Exploration is part of what liberal arts education is like, even if getting out of your concert zone is difficult and could lead to what you perceive as failing. It's not failing, it's exploring. And excuse my very Italian way of thinking about this, but college life is about working hard and playing hard. Take time to play hard too. Your happiness and mental health will really benefit. And ultimately, you will also be a better student and person. Point number four, be patient. Be patient with yourself and others. We live in a time of immediate gratification, but learning is not always fast. Putting different parts of yourself back together after you unlearn is not easy. And adjusting to college life and the way we engage with learning at Yale and US takes time. Continue working hard and doing things with love. It will be our fruits. Point number five, question everything. Ask questions to better understand and to challenge your own assumptions. Ask yourself why. And once you know the answer to that, ask yourself why again, then repeat. As Ricardo Cardoso, one of my faculty colleagues says to his students, if you normally don't speak much, 
or ask a question in front of others, push yourself to try and ask. It will become easier with time. Point number six, listen, and I would add, be teachable. Listen with respect. Give your friends and colleagues the gift of your full presence. With your whole body, engage in listening, seeing, and just being. Listening is about understanding what others are saying, not about judging whether they're right or wrong. It's about engaging with their viewpoints, really embracing their reality and lived experience. It's fitting other people's shoes. If you normally find yourself speaking more than others, speak less and work on your listening skills. Leave space for others to participate. Point number seven, start taking action where you are with what you have. The world we're living in requires urgent action from all of us, and especially from talented young people like you, who will become tomorrow's leader. Action to get out of the pandemic and address the climate crisis, to eliminate injustices and racism, poverty and inequality, to make this world a better place. You may feel with little knowledge or experience or that you cannot make a difference, but yes, you can. Yes, you can. Start small and start near and make roots by engaging with the college community, communities around the city and communities around the world. Dream big. You're not here to get a good education, a good job and some financial stability. You're here to make this world a better place. Believe in it. Welcome to Yale and US College. Hi, first years. I'm Denise, a sophomore and the president of the student government, also known as StuGov. I'm really excited to be welcoming all of you to our community this year. I remember being in your position just last year as I first stepped foot into Yale and US amidst a global pandemic. At that time, I was watching the first year assembly video with my orientation group leaders, a residential college advisors where many thoughts and mixed emotions had struck me. I felt so surreal that I was about to embark on a new chapter in my life at Yale and US. I was filled with the excitement of what was to come especially after having gone through a fantastic orientation program that was only made possible through the hard work of the orientation committee and the Dean of Students office. While I was raring to go, there was also much uncertainty for what was to come. Navigating your first steps into college can be so thrilling, but also so overwhelming. Dealing with the global pandemic, transitioning, living away from your family for both locals and internationals alike, and being surrounded by so many outstanding individuals. There's probably even someone among you who have already contributed to your research publication. Well, in our journey through college, the greatest cheerleader can be ourselves, but the greatest adversary can also be ourselves. Self-doubt will inevitably creep in. Am I good enough? How do I make sure that I make the most out of my year on US experience? And do I belong in your and US? I can assure you that every single one of you are here because you deserve to be. And despite the circumstances of a global pandemic, you were guided by your aspirations, your dreams, and you never gave up. You've learned to adapt, persevere, and now here you are. Take a moment to let that sink in. Now, each and every single one of you brings your own set of experiences perspectives, and backgrounds that make you unique. Stay rooted in that. Remember that you did not leave your home communities and your cultures behind when you became a part of the Yo and US community. You bring them with you, and I highly encourage you to share them with the diverse community here. At Yo and US, there are also tons of opportunities, resources, and support systems. You can pursue your academic interests, pick up a new spot, or explore a career development opportunity at the Center of International and Professional Experience, also known as SIPE, both locally and abroad. Or you can even become a barista at Brew House. The possibilities are endless. As you explore these opportunities and get to know a little bit more about yourself, remember to also take care of your mental health. Know that you are never alone on this journey and there are many support networks for you to count on. Our committed academic peer tutors are here to support you in your studies, 
your lovely RCAs for your campus or life advice, and dedicated peer support groups like PS We Care and the Counseling Centre. Student Government has also got your back. We support and work together with various student organisations and the student body to support initiatives like the Interfaculty Games. We also advocate for student interests by working together with staff and faculty for policy changes such as summer housing or gender neutral suites. StuGov also represents your views while engaging with external groups like other institutes of higher learning in the inter-uni dialogue or even governmental white papers. The many student organizations here contribute significantly to the life of your and US. You can join an identity collective or performance art or maybe just start your own student organization. And because it's just so accessible to do so, you'll constantly find campus life filled with the creativity and innovation from the community. The community comes together to organize different kinds of events, and you'll soon notice the many posters that will pop up in your lives throughout the semester. I would like to share something with you. Before this summer break, Chandana Tao A had to go into a quarantine because of a COVID-19 case. It came as a shock to the community as it happened during our examinations and assignment submission week. There was much anxiety and stress among the students. At that moment, my team and I had to come together to work with the faculty and staff to make necessary arrangements for academic accommodations, mental wellness support, and ensure effective communication to the community. It just seems so daunting at first, especially for me, being one of those that got affected by the leave of absence notice. However, the support of my sweet mates and my Stugaf team and the various encouragement and offers to help from the community pressed us on. The community even came together to create a mutual aid fund for those in Chandana and residents from other RCs offered to do grocery or food runs for those who could not leave their residences. The Dean of Students and staff worked so tirelessly through the night just to ensure that they were doing their best to support the community in dire times like this. The community's collective care, support, and resilience is a feeling that I have closely etched to my heart when I think about how blessed I am to be surrounded by the community. You experience the spirit of the community not only in dire situations, you also experience it in the everyday moments of life here at Yo and US. It is the shared moments with others that add the color and spice to your journey. It could be coming home to your seatmates cracking jokes and laughing loudly in the common area, very long late nights with your friends just to meet your assignment deadlines, but also just ending up sharing about your dreams and goals in life. Or it could also be just chilling at the battery with your orientation group leaders and your RCAs playing board games. These are the moments that you will remember too. So as you take your route and plant your seed here at Yo and US, learn to trust the process and keep an open mind. Share your knowledge, skills, and keep challenging yourself and your peers. Remember, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Water your seeds alongside each other and watch your efforts bear fruit. Once again, my heartiest congratulations to our newly admitted Kingfishers. Welcome home, take root, keep growing, and above all, have fun! Welcome to the Yale NUS Class of 2025 residents of Chandana Residential College. I am Stephen Bernasik, your Chandana College Rector. I welcome you to the living and learning community of Chandana College. This will be your home for the next four years, your location for living and learning in this next stage of your academic adventure. Unfortunately, because of delays in approvals for return to Singapore, I will not have been able to yet to greet any of you in person. I also know that I'm not the only one who's not actually present on campus for this first year assembly. I hope that we all will soon return and be through our stay home notices shortly. So I will be greeting you all virtually and hoping to provide some words of welcome to you via this recording. Before I provide some further words of welcome and rectorly advice, I want to introduce the people of Chendana College, faculty and staff who make up the Chendana College team. 
you will become familiar with them over your time at the college. And we want to, to let you know that they are here to help you have a successful, enjoyable, and productive academic journey for the next few years. First is Assistant Dean, Dr. Mei Yi Shaw. She is assisted in her student life duties by residential life officers, Joshua and Olivia, our residential college manager, Kelvin Chan, our assistant management officer, Serene Tam, and Chandana's excellent team of residential college advisors, Christian, Natasha, Prayog, Raphael, Yoon, Jimin, and Chayortiana. In addition, you will meet and interact with our Chandana residential faculty fellows, professors Jan Gruber, Marvin Montefrio, Eunice Tan, Sebastian Pohl, and Kiet Hua Chan and their families. You will get to know all of these individuals during orientation in the first few weeks of the semester. We hope they will become an important part of your life in Chandana. The theme of orientation, and you're welcome to the college this year, is taking root. From my perspective as someone who is raised on a Midwestern United States farm, I want to provide a few words of wisdom about taking root in a new environment, the environment of Yale NUS College and your residential college, Chandana. Every farmer's son or daughter quickly learns what is required for the successful growth of, of a crop, of, of wheat or vegetables, or of college students for that matter. I would summarize these requirements as follows. First, good seeds or seedlings. Second, fertile and well-tended soil. Third, an appropriate climate and luck with the weather. Fourth, appropriate support systems. And fifth, the importance of growing in diversity. Let me explain what these requirements mean in a little more detail, with emphasis on the growth of a crop of successful college students. First, the seeds or seedlings must be of high quality stored <clears throat> carefully before planting and nurtured properly after planting. Of course, you are all these, you all are these high quality seeds and seedlings, having already spent years in preparation, cultivating a love of learning, curiosity about the world, and the ability to strive towards the sunshine of understanding. Second, the seedlings require fertile soil if they are to thrive. This fertile soil is for our incoming students is the classrooms, the laboratory, the library, the dance and art studio, and the residential college life itself. This fertile soil includes the curriculum, the common curriculum, the specific curriculum of your major, and your capstone experience. This fertile soil is well tended by the faculty and staff of the college, and uh, also by your interactions with one another as you grow together in learning. Third, a growing crop must have an appropriate climate and certainly some luck with the weather. It is very difficult to grow a crop in a desert or on the polar ice caps, or even in a temperate climate with fertile soil, fickle weather, too much rain or too little rain can cause trouble with the growth of the crop. We are, <clears throat> we are lucky here at Yale NUS to have an excellent climate for education for the growth of a successful crop of college students. We are located in a country that values education and research. You are in a college founded by two great universities, Yale and the National University of Singapore. And we are located at the commercial and cultural crossroads, which holds the future of our increasingly connected planet in Asia for the world. Fourth, a growing crop must have available the appropriate support systems. You must stake up the tomatoes to increase production. You must shade or net the strawberry fields to prevent the ripening fruit from burning or the local birds from eating your harvest before you can collect it. Also for college students, support for your health and well-being, appropriate and timely advice from your professors and mentors, and help with financial or personal concerns are all available and needed from time to time so that you can continue to grow on this journey. And fifth, an ingredient which is sometimes not recognized in the growth of co crops or of thriving college students. That is the importance of a diverse growing culture. Monoculture crops, only wheat or only corn or only strawberries for kilometers in every direction does not lead to the best crop outcome. Pollination, pests, soil fertility and long-term yield all suffer when the growing fields are not diverse and multicultural. So it is with college students. The best outcomes are from multicultural collections of students, 
those with diverse backgrounds, diverse interests, diverse goals, and a strong appreciation of the importance of diversity. This ingredient is also here for you as students of Yale and U.S. College. With this bit of advi advice then, I welcome you, the Yale and U.S. Class of 2025, to, to Chandana Residential College. Take root and flourish.